Sony GV500 uh, video Walkman repair. As you see, when it's powered on, it's blurry. Uh, text is very smeary. It's the same case when you're playing a video. Um, I believe that there's probably leaking capacitors in this. So I'm going to take this apart and we'll, we'll see. Okay, so I've got this thing all taken apart. This was quite an undertaking. As you can see, there's a, there's a number of surface mount capacitors here on this board. Uh, I went ahead and ordered all of these uh, capacitors because I can see leaking on some of them. And I know these Sony products are very notorious for having these type of capacitors leaking and going bad. So I went ahead and ordered all of them. There is some on this board as well that, uh, that I'm going to change. All the capacitors on those two boards that I can find uh, came to about $7.87 on DigiKey. Now it's important when you order them to make sure that you measure these um, and get the right height and the right width because they may look the same on the pictures, but you need to make sure you're getting the right size and right footprint. Otherwise they're not going to fit on your board and they're not going to fit in your device when you put it back together. So that's really important. Um, so I did that and then the only thing is I haven't got this display apart. I don't know if there is a board inside this display um, and if there's capacitors up here. Uh, I did order the service manual from Sam's uh, Photofax for this, but it's going to be at least two or three days before I can get the digital copy to see. So I may end up having to submit another order to DigiKey just to get the rest of the capacitors. But Hopefully after all that, I think that's the main problem. Hopefully after all that, I can get this thing back together. And then it's just, uh, it just, it's a million little screws and bits of plastic and things that I got to remember where they go and how it goes back together. So I'd really like to get this done soon so that I do not forget where everything went. So you can see on the pads of these capacitors that stuff that's not shiny that's kind of uh, brown that's the electrolyte that's leaked out of these capacitors um, if you look at these like resistors or surface mount capacitors or whatever these are right here they should be shiny and clean um, not kind of waxy that's the electrolyte from the capacitors like I said so all of these are going to have to be changed and then the board has to be cleaned. If you don't clean that off of the board, it will eat away at the, uh, at the board and traces. So you need to clean that off uh, really good before you install your new capacitors. All right, the new capacitors are here from DigiKey and I pulled off two of the old caps and that stuff you see on the board there, that is electrolyte that's leaked out of the capacitors. So now I need to clean this board really carefully because that stuff, um, sometimes that's conductive and it will short components out. It will also eat at the traces on the boards. So I need to clean that off and, uh, and then clean the pads up so that I can solder on the new uh, the new capacitors. All right, well, with a little bit of 99% alcohol and a cotton swab, I cleaned up these uh, pads and put a little bit more solder on there, and I'm working on cleaning up the board, and then we'll put some new capacitors on. All right, so the way that I remove these capacitors is that I grab them with a pair like uh, forceps and I twist them and I go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and eventually you can twist these and they'll come off and when you get them off you're going to have um, some broken pad uh, not pads but broken legs that came off the capacitors left on the as you can see now this is left. 
That's the base of the capacitor right there. So um, you can normally pull that up with a little pick and then heat up the last little leg of the capacitor with your soldering iron. And then after that, then you need to clean the pads off with um, uh, some solder wick and some rubbing alcohol. So this is what the pad looks like when it's uh, when you got the capacitor off and you've used your soldering iron to get the rest of it. And you take a Q-tip with some 99% alcohol and you clean up around the capacitor and around the pads um, as best you can. You go around and clean up everything because you don't want any leftover electrolyte. When you're done, that will be cleaned up. And then you want to uh, take some solder wick and clean, uh, get the old solder off the pad and then put some fresh solder on the pad. And here's the pad after you cleaned it with um, some solder wick and then you put some fresh solder on it. After that, you need to put your new capacitor on top and make sure you align it in the correct orientation, um, which if that was the new one, you just make sure the black stripe is facing which way it goes. And then you just heat each side until it uh, attaches and you move on to the next one. And that's the new capacitor soldered in place. It's all ready to go. So you just do that for the rest of these. Move on and go through them. These are really small, so they're very tricky to do. Now, take lots of photos of your circuit board. Make sure you uh, know exactly what size capacitors went where and what uh, direction. There's normally markings on the circuit board like this one has, but also, I'm a very bad artist, but I just quickly draw something and mark down the capacitor's uh, orientation and value before I take it off the board too. And then this is just on my bench. I can quickly look up and reference it and go, okay, I am sure that I know which one is which. Or you just print out a copy of the, you know, of your pictures or the schematic if you have a board view of the circuit board. I just like a regular uh, pen and paper. It just, it's easy for me, so. Anyways, um, I gotta keep moving on through these and then we'll see if this fixes the problem. Just walk, single file, that's it. Now if we just stay calm, no one's gonna be harmed by the huge bomb that's gonna explode any minute. So, it's finally all done. This is quite a big job. It took me a lot of time. And these are all the capacitors and bits of pieces of capacitors that I changed out. Um, every single one of the capacitors, these surface mount ones in this unit was bad. Even the ones that didn't look bad that weren't leaking, as soon as I took them off, you could see leakage on the board and it just smelled horrible. Now it's working great, but you really have to take the time and change every single one of these. If you're going to get in here and, and do one uh, on any of these Sony devices, you just need to change each and every one of them. Now, so cost of what it all the parts included if we figure what I spent I spent about uh, with shipping about $14 but I ordered twice to three times as many capacitors as I needed because I figure I'm going to do at least one more of these uh, video Walkmans in the future I always do end up doing one or two of any project I work on so I bought enough to do at least one more plus I bought a few extras because if you're ever changing surface mount capacitors always buy extras you're always going to make a mistake you're always going to overheat one up when you're trying to mount them they're very difficult these things are very very small so just buy some extras they're only you know 10 20 30 cents each so it's worthwhile to have a few on hand just in case you mess one up when you're trying to mount it but all in all i'm really happy how this came out it, machine's working great um this uh all of these video walkmans are all suffering this if you go on ebay you can see every single one of them's dead uh same things happening with the sony uh camcorders handy cams of this era so um basically anything sony from the early 90s and that you see, sir, are going to need this job. So 
Um, anyways, well, I appreciate you watching my channel. Uh, I hope you learned something, and thank you very much. One more thing I just wanted to quickly add is if you're watching this video because you're planning on doing this repair yourself, um, I went to Sam's website, which is Sam's uh, technical publishing, uh, like Sam's PhotoFax website, and I downloaded uh, the service manual for this. They actually didn't have it as a digital download available at the time, but I emailed them and they had it up on their website within like nine hours and it was over 200 pages and it was the original service manual on PDF form. So it, it was 20 bucks for that one uh, download, but it's a 200 page original Sony manual that tells you exactly step by step how to dismantle the device it has all the schematics it has all the board views it has uh, everything from you know uh, the cartridge set up for the tape every uh, just it, it's a really nice manual so if you're doing this or you're working on another video walkman go to sam's website uh, that's that's what it is samswebsite.com Check them out and see if they have the, just Google, they have a search thing. Uh, just search the uh, model number and see if they have the service manual for this. It's well worth it to get when you're working on a project like this. There's just, it's, it saves you so much time when you can look at, a, at pictures and see where everything goes back together. And then it also helps you when you're running into problems, so. Anyways, that's it. I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll catch you next time.